This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Steve Kravitz. Steven. Steven. Steven? Yes, Alex. Steven? How are you doing, Steven? I'm doing really good. How are you? When you were a kid or whatever, did you ever have a nickname? No, not really. Yeah. A Crav. Crav? Right. Really? That's what your friends called you? Hey, Crav. Hey. Right. Hey, Crav. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I had a nickname from the day I was born, so, you know. What was that? Bolo. All right. Yeah. Short for Boleslav. <laughs> well, I had an uncle, and his name was Boleslav, and he died. So what do you name your kids after? Dead relatives, right? That's right. Right? But the unfortunate part was they didn't want to strap me with a name like Boleslav. No, that's a good thing. So they, I don't know where they came up with Bennett. It just sounded like a nice name. It's a British name. It's not a, you know, it's not a, a Jewish name. Right. It's not like Schmoyl or uh, Samuel or even, I think, well, is Stephen Jewish? I think it's non-denominational. Non, non, uh, non-denominational, yeah. But my parents didn't want to name me Boleslav because they, they figured the kids would make fun of that. So, no, you think? Well, you got to be careful what you name your kid, you know? Because it's going to last the rest of his life. Who's the actress that named their kid Apple? Uh, uh, that... <coughs> I'm trying to remember now. That's like... Gwyneth Paltrow, maybe? I think you're right. Yeah, Apple. Uh, right. Which, yeah, what, you wouldn't name him after a, com a computer store? I mean, come on. You know. I no, is, isn't, isn't it named after the fruit apple? Well, yes. But uh, um, I, I don't know why they called the company Apple, because there already was an, well, there already was an Apple, I think. I think that the uh, uh, Apple, the Beatles outfit, came before Apple, the computer. Oh, yeah, a long before. Yeah. And I think there was a suit at one point, but it got settled and everybody was happy. So, right. You know, and they got kept the, they were able to keep using the name Apple for the computers, and Apple was the name of the company. So, anyway. Mm. Mm. But you got to be careful what you name your kid. You know, uh, like uh, Re Regina. You wouldn't want to name your kid Regina, would you? No, but that's uh, the capital of uh, Saskatchewan, isn't it? Re Regina? No. Uh, what's the proverb? Proverb. Providence. Pro <laughs> <laughs> what's the proverb? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah. You sound like you're loopy today. Yeah, I am. I'm uh, very loopy. What What are you loopy from? Just tired? Yeah. yeah what? Working too hard at the... Uh, at Lowe's. At Lowe's, right? Not working enough. Not working enough. Oh, no. okay. Yeah. I was talking to Bobby Slayton the other day. I was he, he called me, wanted to see... Every now and then he wants to see if I'm still alive, you know. Does he do the show? He did. He doesn't want to anymore. He, doesn't want, he just doesn't want to do podcasts he just doesn't like doing them so i right. so i respect that he's my friend first and an interview late secondly you know right and and uh he i i he said do you talk to any of the old guys at all and i said well i talked to bubbles i said but then again who doesn't talk to bubbles right and and then i said i talked to kravitz he says oh how's he and i said he's working at lowe's uh. you know, you know. 
He's, Thanks for blowing my cover. Yeah, well, I said, you know, I said I'm trying to encourage him that he should probably get back into films because if you had a character then, you're even more of a character now. I would love to get back into films. But you don't try, do you? Well, not really, not now. Why? Well, because I'm in Worcester. Well, that's one thing, yeah, but, you know. Uh, it, it, mm, how uh, how do you uh, you can I think you can audition for movies now from Wooster. Yeah, I, but I, I need an agent. You want to be my agent? Uh, yeah, right. You know something? I couldn't even manage my own career. Right. You know, I've had people say that to me. I've had comedians say that to me. Would you be my manager? And I went, I can't even manage my own career. Right. You That's know? the truth. To begin with. I am petrified to make calls to people. Oh, you're not. Yes, I am. You mean cold calls? Cold calls. I, th I, I want to call a, a Hollywood uh, casting agent, for instance. Right. Now, uh, a guy who is a, is a real agent has no fear of that. He'll just call up. Hey, I'm so-and-so. I represent Stephen Kravitz. you got to have this guy. Yeah. You know, me... Uh, I, if you want my 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 my, uh, my pitch would be, if you want to hire Stephen Kravitz, I won't stand in your way. <laughs> Never mind. I don't want you as a manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be a pathetic manager. Right. You know. Sure, I could say, yeah, okay, I'll try it. I give it a try, but I wouldn't be doing you any favors. You know. No. You know. And they say, where is he? Well, he's in Wooster. Well, th they can audition you from Wooster now. I mean, I, I think a lot of auditions are done by Zoom. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure they they would like you to come in and do a read for them, but maybe they see you, you know, on Zoom, and then they go, okay, he sounds good. Let's bring him into, let's bring him into L.A. Right. Or, you know, they, you can probably go to New York for casting. Right. You know, there's a lot of... Ca we, they do a lot of stuff out of New York. I mean, I get these casting notices for extras, and they they doing everything here, you know. So anyway, so uh, how's the weather up there? Must be cold as mother. Yes. Whatever. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. Yes. And it snowed. We have snow on the ground. You have snow on the ground. Wow. Uh, 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 and how do you like your new place that you're living in? Oh, I love it. You love it, yeah. Well, it's a whole house, right? It's right. It's like a whole house. And uh, uh, how are you getting along with your roomie? Great. Yeah. So that works good, right? Oh yeah, it's 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 a it's a great situation. In case people aren't aware, he he was living in an apartment, and then they wanted to raise the rent. What thirty five percent, something like that. Thirty eight percent. Thirty eight percent. Who does that? Especially this time of year, you know. The corporations. Is it a corporation that bought yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. They're buying up all the three deckers. Oh, that's what it is, because that's a whole new horrible thing that's going on. Right. Right. Where, where these corporations right. are buying up all these houses, and then they're renting them out under their own name and making money out of them. So they just arbitrarily said 38% raise. Right, right. So you were paying... I was paying 1000 A 1000 So we're talking about 38% is what? $380 more a month? Uh, it was $300 more. $1,300. went up to 1300 Wow. That's quite a jump, you know. That is a jump. Especially when that's what you... You know, you 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 figure your uh, rent is like you know so much, and you appropriate it for your whatever. To suddenly have it go up three hundred dollars, right, right, is ridiculous. But it was undoable, yeah. and it was freezing in that apartment. They never warmed it up. No, no, they put in they put in electric heaters. Finally, finally, but like. They, yeah, you know, right before I'm leaving, they put in the electric heaters. That's wonderful. Did you have to pay the electric bill? Yeah. 
So that's no that's no mitzvah. No. You know, if they were paying, they didn't pay the electric bill on the electric heaters. No. Oh fuck them! All right. Aren't they required by law to give you a certain amount of heat during the winter? I don't know. Because I know here in Manhattan, a landlord has to give you heat uh, when the temperature goes below, I think it's 55. So they have hmm. to send up heat. Now, my, in my building, it's radiators. Or is Steam my, radiators? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or as my uh, wife from Philadelphia calls them, radiators. Radiators. And I told her, it's not radiators, it's radiators. And she says, no, it's radiators. And I said, okay, what are these things, what the heat coming out of here, what does it do? It radiates, right? It doesn't radiate, it radiates. So therefore, what is it? And she says, a radiator. We, we also have another argument along this line. How would you pronounce S, the name, last name, S-H-I-P-R-O? Shapiro. She pronounces it Shapiro. Well. And I keep... Like huh? Is it apricot or apricot? To me, it's apricot. Right. What did you What did you call it when you were growing up? Apricot. Apricot. Yeah, but that's a minor argument there. Shapiro versus Shapiro. <laughs> so there's a place here in New York. It's a famous deli, and it's called something and Shapiro. Shapiro. Right. Right. Um, and, and so one day I said, oh, let's go in here. It's, it's great delicatessen. We go in. And finally, I, I decide, I, as we're leaving, I ask the guy at the counter, what is the name of this place? And I, it's either Stein and or whatever. But he said, blah, 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 and Shapiro. I said, is it pronounced Shapiro? She says, no, it's pronounced Shapiro. And I said, see? And she says, he's wrong. Well, well <laughs> what are you going to do? That's like here, it's not Donna Summers, it's Donna, Donna Summer. Donna Summer, yeah. Right. Well, but that's, that's, you know. A regional accent. Right, right. You, do, I'm trying to figure out, do you have that regional accent? I guess you do to a certain extent, yeah. A little bit, but not much. I mean, I've been gone a long time. Yeah, I mean, I had a friend who was right from your area, Wooster, uh, named Abby Hoffman. Right. And you sound a little like Abby. Your accent is a little like Abby's. Yeah. You say your mother babysat Abby? Yes. Oh. Well, there's there there's your touch with fame, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. My brush with fame. <laughs> so we're coming up on the holiday season. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But let me ask you, as a Jew, which I assume you are. Yeah. Yes. I mean, with, with a schnoz like that, it couldn't be anything else, okay? I could be the poster child of Israeli bonds. <laughs> anyway, so, so uh, you, you, uh, you, you, uh, uh, you have Christmas coming on. Mm -hmm. How... How do you, because I was raised Jewish, too, how do you relate to Christmas? It's a day off. Yeah. It's a day, it's a, it's a day off from work. Yeah, yeah. That's it, you know. Right. Um, uh, we never, people said to me, what did you do on Christmas? Did your parents give you presents? And my parents did give me presents. Did your parents give you presents? On Christmas, no. No. So, did they give you anything for, like, Hanukkah? Yeah. So, in other words, they were Hanukkah presents instead of... Christmas presents. Christmas presents. My parents just gave me presents, whatever it was. I, they, I, I don't think they said they were Hanukkah or they were Christmas, but, you know. And, but the thing is, my birthday comes a week before Christmas. 
Oh, really? So you would have thought I would have gotten cheated. Right. Okay, they would have gone, well, you got all your presents last week. Well, hey, listen, if I were born in June, you give me presents, and then Christmas comes, you give me presents, right? Well, you're so, an only child, right? Well, it, well, that's the point I'm about to make. So my parents weren't going to rob me of a holiday. You know, I, I, my birthday, I got presents. A week later, more presents. You know, but it's because I was an only child. If I wasn't an only child, I probably would have gotten like an orange or something like that. You know? <laughs> here, here is your, here is your, here, I got your Christmas right here. You know, we're right. Jews. We don't celebrate Christmas. Right. We go for Chinese. And we don't, we don't really, so, we don't. We don't celebrate Christmas, do we? I mean, you don't celebrate it in any particular no. way, do you? No. Did you ever have a Christmas tree? No. I never had a Christmas tree either, when I was growing up. However, I married a Jewish girl, Susan, and the first Christmas away from her parents, you know what she wanted? A Christmas tree. Yeah. Yeah. You ever try to do anything with do you would you know what to do with a christmas tree mm -hmm, i think so i mean i've seen enough of them yeah how do they stand up <laughs> i don't know <laughs> see see there's the how, do, how does a christmas tree stand up oh no, you put them in a the stand you put them in a the stand you bolt them in well that's one way right they used to come when i was a kid they used to come when you bought them at a store or something like that. On the bottom, they had like this cross of wood. Oh, okay. And then it was, you know. Hammered in. Hammered in. That was that was the base. But as years went on, you don't have those bases anymore, and you get this little thing, right? Well, right. Well, when we got our first, when we, that year, we decided to have a Christmas tree. We didn't know the first thing about Christmas trees, you know? And I'm going like, what, what shall I do? What, 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 what shall I, how do I make this thing stand? I'm trying to make it stand up by itself. And then somebody said, well, you gotta get a stand for it. Right. So I went across the street where I got the tree from and they had stands and I bought a stand and then you screwed them in, but then you had to screw it in just right, otherwise it, you know. Right. And then somebody told me, put an aspen, but then you put water in the little thing below it. It's a little okay. well. And you put water in there. Go get that. Is that anything important? No. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and you put water in there. And then somebody told me, and this is, I don't know if anybody knows this, uh, put an aspirin in there. And I said, oh, well, is that right? Yeah, they said that makes it last longer. You know. Who knows? You know. But I. My it, it, wife's tail. So then we put up the tree. Then we then we got to get lights. So we go out and we buy lights. And now you got to figure out how do you string the lights around the tree. We don't know any of this. If we were brought up goyim, as the expression <laughs> goes, we would immediately have that inculcated into our DNA. Okay. But we don't know what to, how to stretch, so we try to string it. It was a mess. It was just a mess. And then finally, we had like four cats. I think maybe five cats at that time. Because uh, every time a cat had a litter, we had to keep one because it was adorable. And by, before you knew it, we had five cats. You know what cats love to do? Eat tinsel. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we put tinsel on the tree. We figured, hey, we'll go full bore on this. We'll put the lights up and we'll put tinsel on the tree. One day, I'm seeing a cat walking across the, the apartment with a piece of tinsel hanging out of its ass. <laughs> Cats love to chew on tinsel. I don't know why. And because it just it just goes through their system and comes out the other end the way it went in. But now it's sticking out of their ass and they're walking around with this tinsel sticking out of their ass. So finally, I just said to hell with it and I yanked on it. And it was like a pull toy that made a sound. You wouldn't believe when you <laughs> pulled it out. 
but I got it all off, and it was it was kind of had cat poop on it, you know. That was wonderful. And then they also love to eat. Uh, they try to eat the pine pine needles, right? You know, they, they they have more fun with the tree than you do. And finally, at the end of the season, which for us was March, we got rid of the tree. And uh, I, you know, by the time you get to the end of the Christmas season, you've got pine needles all over the place. You know. Okay. And then you got to haul the thing down to the street where the garbage people pick it up. But I, we learned, it was like a whole new uh, set of uh, abilities that we learned how to do. And so, uh, but you never had a Christmas tree, so. No. So you wouldn't never know. had a Christmas tree. Even you never like when you were married. Did you marry Goyim or did you marry Jews? I married non-Jews. Non-Jews. So didn't they say hey, it's Christmas time? Where's the Christmas tree? No. No, really. That's that's interesting. That's fascinating. Uh, I would have thought they would have said, "Hey, you know, we're uh, we're we're Christmas tree people here," you know. Never came up. Yeah. What if they had asked you? Would you have said yes? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Well, I had a Jewish wife, so it's two Jews and a Christmas tree. Hey, that's a name for a movie, Two Jews and a Christmas Tree. Right, a Hallmark movie. I think I'll write one, write a script called Two Jews and a Christmas Tree. And just all about these two Jews trying to not, to navigate a Christmas tree at Christmas time. First you gotta buy it. You know, you gotta know what to buy. You know. What do you buy? A Douglas Fern? For well, yeah, they're all the same, aren't they? Is it a fern tree? Fur? For fur. F I R. F I R. Yeah, the Douglas fir, and then uh, you go down there, a whole bunch of them, and you don't know how big you want it or whatever, you know. So you can get the really. Well, you, you survived, Alex. You survived the ordeal. Yeah, I survived. That was years ago, though, and I've never had it. I don't. I, has Marjorie ever said, "Let's have a Christmas tree"? No, I don't think so. I think maybe one year she said, for the fun of it, let's get a Christmas tree. Because this apartment is perfect for a Christmas tree. It's a right huge, huge apartment. So we could put a huge tree. It's 12, the ceilings are almost 12 feet high. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe a little more than that, 12 feet, I'd say. So you could get a, you get a big, huge tree, put it in this apartment. I don't, yeah, we don't do it. That's not what we do at Christmas time. Not a big deal. Yeah, and then it's then and then there's the other problem, which I, I have talked about on numerous occasions, and that's I'm not good at buying gifts. I don't know about you. Are you good at buying gifts? No, I, I never know what to get anybody. Terrible at buying gifts. I don't know what to buy. Right. So I said to Marjorie, I really I'm terrible at this, and I used to buy you like cameras and. Uh, some I bought you an iPhone once and this and that. I'm good at electronics, okay? You want me to buy you an electronic? I'll go out and buy you a goodie, okay? But otherwise, I don't know I don't know from that. And I said, how about a gift card? You know, that's well, it's it's the best kind of gift in that if you are give her a gift. And she always says to me, if I don't like it, I can always take it back. And I'm going, well, that's not the idea of giving a gift. The idea is giving a gift is I give you a gift and then you enjoy that gift. Right, somebody like. Right? You don't think of it in terms of, well, I can turn this in and get so many dollars and I'll buy something else. Uh, right. Know. So what's the difference between that and me giving you a gift card? Be a gift card is kind of a chicken shit way out. Well, it may be a chicken shit way out, but it, it's still, it's a Christmas gift, isn't it? No, you're right. And but then I'm she... like somebody a lottery ticket. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Like, give them a lottery ticket and hope they don't win? <laughs> well, if they win, it's the best Christmas present they ever got. You know? Yeah, right. You know? And, you, you know, you spent five bucks and they make a, a couple of million. Well, it's not that I'm being cheap here. If she wants me to spend $1,000 on something, I'll spend $1,000 on something. 
of course, we'll be eating like uh, popcorn for the next month. But you know, right, right. Uh, but I mean, I would do it. But I can't think of a gift for her. I mean, if I buy her jewelry, she's not going to like any jewelry I buy her. She'll take it back and get another piece of jewelry or just get the money. Right. Right, and then go spend it on something else. Well, what's the difference between that and a gift card? Uh -huh. You mean a gift card that, that is accepted everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe an Amazon gift card because they got everything anyway. Right. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. Is that right? Yeah. Sh shall we call this to a close? Yes. All right, let's call it to a close, ladies and gentlemen. That's Stephen Kravitz. Bye, Steve. Bye, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. That was uh, Stephen Kravitz, and uh, we'll see him as the new year approaches uh, uh, next year. We'll see him. I love it. I love it this time of the year. Uh, but after, right after Christmas, you say, oh, well, I'll see you next year. You know, everybody has a good time with that. I'll, I'll see you next year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, uh, so, uh, man, it's been rainy today. Ugh, just horrible. Just horrible weather. And then that makes my, my breathing difficult. It always has. I, I grew up in uh, Marin County in uh, San Francisco, and in the winter time, it became so moldy. I I just you know I had to um, uh, learn how to breathe all over again. I mean it was really terrible. It was really terrible. Uh, but uh, I I always I was I was one of those sickly kids. You know the ones that had asthma. And that you could hear me. Here comes here comes Schwarzman. He's coming down the street. We can tell. We can hear him wheezing a block away, right? Yeah, never never in great uh, shape as a kid that way. But you know what the hell? Uh, we 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 try our best. You know. Uh, let me see here. I just want to get rid of something here. And uh, there we go. There we go. And we'll quit that too. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to get uh, uh, ooh, get rid of things. Anyway, hey, you know, there are a couple of people waiting to, you know, Thursday nights. <clears throat> the people just don't join the program early, all right? But here, here they come. And um, let's see here. First of all, there's, uh, there's uh, Jeff. And uh, hey, Jeff, you don't even have any audio on tonight. <laughs> I'm working on it. Bravo, no, bravo, <laughs> bravo it's terrific. And you know, your your audio is fine. I can hear you, Jeff. That's not the problem. You, I just don't hear any of the program coming back at me. So you've done a perfect job of it tonight. What are you looking for? Don't don't touch anything. Oh, I can see you. you, you know, oh, okay. You can see me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So everything's fine. We have. Uh, can we you hear me? Yeah. We have special children on this show who. <laughs> oh, now you've got the audio. Turn the audio down. Jeez almighty. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But, but turn your audio off. There it is. I got it. I found it. You found it. Oh, okay. I found it. I found it. Hey, but no, you didn't find it. How about now? There, that's fine. I had two of you. Loud. Loud. Huh? Hey, Alan. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and uh, hello, Charlie. Gosh. Charlie's always very good. I always see him waiting there from about 1030, our time, uh, waiting to, you know, go on. I, I Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Charlie. And I thought it was just going to be you and me, maybe, but I figured if it was just going to be you and me, that's fine, too, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last check. week when it was just Jeff and and Alex and I, that wasn't fine. So now you know what you're <laughs> doing, Charlie. Well, now you now you understand. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, come on. We have here an a, 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 what is it again? An, an astrophysicist. Yeah. 
He's an astrophysicist, my friend. I, I, can, I know, can I know you, that. Can you beat that for an intelligent conversation? He's always been one of the more intelligent people that call the program and also very careful to butt in and say what he feels about something. Yeah. He's a smart guy. How, how much uh, gift card did you send him to say that? Uh, <laughs> the check's in the mail. The check's in the mail, exactly. So anyway, so it, it was, uh, it was um, yeah. So, uh, but uh, 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 today, a uh, big deal, they, they finally released it late today. They released a January 6th report. Surprise, surprise, it's uh -oh. only three pages long. Who would have known? That was that was the redacted version so Donald Trump could read it. No, it was, yeah, it was <laughs> little stick figures, you know, things like that for him. I didn't hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were talking about what to get uh, your wife. How about just take her out to dinner somewhere nice, a really nice restaurant? French, French champagne. She expects that. She champagne. expects that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I got her what she wanted. She, she told oh. me. She picked it. Oh. Yeah. The Toomey bag. Oh, that's right. Oh, you mentioned that last night. Yeah. yeah. You forget this show right after it closes off, don't you? <laughs> nothing. Does. Nothing sticks with you. Uh, Everything. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I have. I have a Toomey bag too for my, like drugs and toiletries that I travel. Yeah, with. Yeah, they're great. They're the best the bag's ever I've made. Had it for 20 years, no problem. Yeah, they don't fall apart. I have one that I bought. I think I bought it the day I decided to have them put down my mother. I know that's... Celebration. Yeah. No, I was shopping in Macy's, and I bought this bag. I didn't know it was a Toomey. I didn't know what a Toomey was. And it was only like 100 bucks. And uh, I have had that bag ever since, you know. It stretches a little bit and things like that, but man, it never breaks, and it's got endless pockets in it, so that you can lose almost everything you own inside there and not find it for a year. You can't find it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So she wanted a Toomey bag, so I said, okay, fine, you know. And uh, uh, so she she also wanted a, a pair of hosiery. So I that was a socket to me. <laughs> See, a hosiery to me, socket to me. She wanted the to me for her and the hosiery for you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, so I I figured I was just going to talk uh, astrophysics with uh, mm. with Charlie. Sure. Because he knows all that stuff, and I could learn a little bit from him. He's probably the only one on the show that could speak and understand Russian, too. Well, not so much anymore. <laughs> what? Did, did you speak Russian at one time? Yeah. I, I, I minored in Russian in college, and the CIA actually recruited me because of my Russian. And you turned him down, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Why did you? Because I couldn't. This was back in the 70s. I could not face my friends and tell them I worked for the CIA. You probably wouldn't be allowed to anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I was once, they wanted me to join the CIA, but I, I couldn't join because I just hate Langley. So, see, that's where the, where, that's where the yeah. uh, CIA <clears throat> is. That's a joke just between Charlie and I. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I would have had to move there. Really? If I had taken the job, yeah. What, what did they mm -hmm. want you to do? I mean, what would have been the position? They wanted me to read Russian scientific journals and keep track of scientific progress in Russia. Oh, really? Oh, that would be yeah. cool. But you spoke Russian that well? Yeah. I used to read Pravda every day. Pravda. And, and, and I know what Pravda means, truth, doesn't it? Which is kind of ironic. Yeah, Russia. it is kind of ironic. <laughs> yeah. And I know how to greet, uh, how to uh, have drinks with you in Russian. Nostrovia. Yep. Right? Yep. And there was another newspaper in uh, in uh, in Izvestia. Russia. There was Izvestia, but there was also Haganyot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Didn't know that, did you? No, actually, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't read that. Yeah. I don't know why I came up with that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, what, what were the other Russian terms I knew? Uh, Nyet. Yeah. You know. 
You know, net net mm. means net. Well, that's it's our true. that's our Russian program for today. I know nothing. Huh? I know nothing. <laughs> what what is that? I know nothing. Yana Znayu. Now, how did you learn Russian? I mean, you didn't come from a Russian he, family. He, he no, I think it because Russia yeah. and the United States were the uh, two major countries for studying astrophysics. Oh, really? Oh, so yeah, you studied Russian Russia. so you would understand their astrophysics. Yeah. Yeah. But how long did it take you to learn Russian? I took it for two years in college, but we, 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 after the first semester, we spoke nothing but Russian in the class, so I picked it up pretty good. You but couldn't then, speak English. But could you write in, in, in the Cyrillic uh, script? Yes. Really? Yep. God, am I impressed by you. No, Alan, I'm not impressed by you. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that really impresses me. You know, I it totally doesn't send you dude wipes. I do, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Here, Alex. Here's something to clean your ass with. Thank you very much. Uh, um, dude wipes. Yeah. yeah. I gotta figure out how to play. How to say dude wipes in Russian? <laughs> how do you say dude wipes in Russian? Yeah. Let's see. That would be uh, Trump wipes. Yeah. 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 Ass wipes, yeah. but uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I um, um, but anyway, this is uh, it's not been a good week for Trump, has it? No, good month. <laughs> no, it's pretty, not a good pretty, month. Not a good month. Not a good. Not a good time for him. You know, not that I'm feeling sorry for him, but you Bill know, still thinks he's innocent. <laughs> yeah. yeah what, I mean, how can you? You know, if I were a, a Republican, a staunch Republican, I wouldn't still be with Trump. After all of this, I would say, hey, we picked the wrong guy. But Phil is just not willing to say he voted for a terrible human being, you know? So. I mean, he collected more than $400 million in donations during the, you know, the uh, election year, and he didn't give a one penny to any other Republican candidates. Right, and he kept what was left over. Am I correct? Yeah. 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 And Phil, Phil last night didn't realize that when you are in, in running for political office and you have a, you know, the donations that are sent to you, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars that people donated, and you spend fifty thousand of it after the election, you can keep it. Yeah. It's yours here. That's why a lot of people do run for political office in spite of the fact that they know they're not going to win. You know, so. Who used to do that a lot? I'm trying to remember now. And he never, you know, never got a nomination or anything like that, but he got a lot of money for just, you know, putting his hat in the ring. And uh, now, uh, did you hear, did you hear who, uh, you don't know this group that well, Alan probably does because they're from the Bay Area. Mm. But one of the members of Journey went to play at Mar-a-Lago. Wow. I think for Ye and that other guy. And I'm thinking, what's, what's possessing that individual? You know, I mean, I knew the people in that group were morons uh, because I used to know of them living in the Bay Area. Uh, and uh, in fact, I used to know Neil Schoen's ex-wife, and she used to tell me stories about him, like uh, she said uh, uh, um, to him once uh, when he went to Europe, "Did you go to Did you go to uh, uh, France?" He says, "No, but we went to Paris." Okay, that's <laughs> that, that, that that's that's the kind of brainiac that Neil Schoen is, you know. They had a couple of good hits. Don't stop believing. Yeah. Were they really good hits? Were they? I mean, uh, uh, when, uh, Lights Go Down in the City, what was that? Was that the song they did too? All about San Francisco? You know what it was? It was a rock band playing basically middle of the road music. Am I right? 
Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah. You know, any of those songs could have been sung by Frank Sinatra, okay? <laughs> right? So I never I never liked them. I always thought they were terrible. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I always thought they were horrible. Um, yeah. But we had a lot of rock bands in the Bay Area. I mean, we had a big, you know, yeah. Huey Lewis, and we had, uh, uh, what was his name? Oh, God. I'm trying to remember the name of the other guy who was very big in the Bay Area. And of course, Jefferson Airplane and the Grateful Dead. And, you know, there's a whole San Francisco music scene that was pretty incredible for its time and for the number of hits that that city produced. Yeah. Uh, you know. But uh, I always liked Huey Lewis for some reason, I always liked his stuff. Mm. And, you know, he just had one hit after another, and then all of a sudden they stopped making hits, and I don't know why. I never could figure that out. L let me give you an example, okay? Um, Billy Joel had what? One hit after another. Yeah. Right? Just endless hits, okay? All right, so we agree to that. All of a sudden, one day... No more hits by Billy Joel. He just stopped. It's like he stopped writing music. And, and I don't know why that happens. And that seemed to have happened with Huey Lewis. I mean, he had how many hits, you know? He had ear problems. Well, no, that was later on. Yeah. But that wasn't, you know, 20 years ago when he stopped recording hits. And I just don't know why does that happen? Do you suddenly not record hits anymore? You just don't have it in you anymore? Or you just say, hey, I made enough money, I'm sick of this, I'm gonna stop. I think that <clears throat> happens a lot. Look at the monkeys. They were really popular. The Billy monkeys Joe didn't write of any of their stuff. stuff. <laughs> no, I guess not. What do you mean Neil guess Diamond. not? Neil Neil Diamond Neil, Neil, Neil Diamond wrote the monkeys stuff. Yes. So yeah. did Carol King. Yes. Yeah, so did quite a few other people. The monkeys never wrote their own material. You know. I think I, it's uh, it's not just one person. I think sometimes two or three people contribute. Well, in the case, in, in something like Billy Joel wrote everything that he recorded, okay? Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the Jefferson Airplane and Starship, or whatever you want to call them, they, they wrote everything that they, you know. So, so did Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond everything. wrote everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, he was not, <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. One day, when I first met Marjorie, Oh, we were talking about various groups and so on. Um, I talked about, was talking to her about groups I liked and she said, I'm not going to tell you who I liked. <laughs> I said, why not? She says, you'll just make fun of me. And I said, oh, come on, I'm not going to make fun of you. I just, starting to go out with you, I still want to get laid, okay? I'm not going to make fun of you. So she says, okay, I really like Neil Diamond. And I said to her, what's wrong with that? You wow. know, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of Neil Diamond's, but he was wow. a good songwriter, you know? I mean, uh, j even if even the songs he didn't write for himself, Daydream Believer is a very good song, you know? Uh, but I mean, he, uh, he <laughs> wrote a lot of great songs, but I saw him the other day, there's a clip of him, they were doing a Broadway show with all his music. I don't know if it's still on Broadway. It may have only lasted a three or four days, and then, you know. But the night it opened, Neil Diamond came to see it, and then they gave him a microphone, and he got up and started singing. He can barely stand. He's got Parkinson's. Has he got Parkinson's? Is that what it is? Yeah, he retired really? a couple of years ago. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Linda Ronstadt has Parkinson's. Oh, Linda Ronstadt is... Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Um, they did a documentary on her a while back, and she doesn't sing anymore because she lost, she said she lost her ability to control her voice uh, mm -hmm. through, I guess it is Parkinson's with her too. And um, then she said that uh, then in this documentary towards the end, she was with a bunch of like, 
people she knew or something, and they all started singing, and she started singing. And she still could kind of do it, you know? But I know how she feels. If I haven't got complete control of my, of my abilities, I don't want to get out there and disappoint people. That's because right. she had this make, I mean, she could sing anything. She sang the, the Mexican stuff, you know? She sang uh, 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 Pirates of Penzance, you know? She sang uh, you know, pop music. She sang Frank Sinatra tunes. I mean, this woman was just amazing. And uh, I think I may have told the story that I went to a demonstration in Washington, D.C., and Linda showed up. And I had had her on my show at one point. I, you know, and I absolutely adored her. I mean, that was really a hot, cute, talented woman, right? Who wouldn't be in love with her? And uh, all of a sudden, I hear uh, on the side of my ear this voice going, Hey, Alex, how are you? And I turn my head, and it's Linda. And all I could think of, it, my heart just sank, right? You know, yeah. she remembers me. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, but she was, oh man, she was adorable, just adorable. And just her talent is, was beyond compare. The, the one thing I always hate, I was a big fan of Elvis Costello. Okay, but the one thing I held against him is that she rec she recorded one of his songs. I can't remember which one it was, and he wanted to try and stop her from recording it because he said she's not good enough to sing my songs. Wow! And I went. She's like ten times better than he was. Yeah. He, he, well, he, you know, he was very good. He was very talented. But um, I remember when we had Elvis Costello, we were doing a. I was at, uh, what was it, was it KML? Yeah, it was KML. Uh, or maybe it was Live 105, I can't remember which. And um, we hired him to play a concert in San Francisco, the sta station. And he got up on stage and sat there and just kept putting down the radio station. Oh, he was God. a real asshole. Wow real asshole oh, back in the wow. day i hear he turned out to be a pretty decent guy because everybody i know has known him recently said yeah he used to be a prick okay but all of a sudden one day he started being a nice guy i guess that's when he married uh what's her name uh, uh diane crawl uh who is again another amazing talent the two of them are incredible and i can't understand why they're married to each other been married a long time but they've never sung together. Never hmm. sung together. And I often wondered why. Probably because he thinks she sucks like he felt about yeah. Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, did you ever see the uh, Larry King interview of Neil Diamond from 2002, 2003, something like that? Well, if that? I had gone, if I had watched uh, Larry King every night on CNN, then maybe I would have. But unfortunately, you, I didn't make an appointment you, television. You can, you can actually see it on YouTube. But uh, yeah. Neil Diamond did very few interviews Yeah. In, in his career. He didn't like to talk about himself. But Larry King got him to open up. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a good interview. It's on YouTube. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know. I mean, Larry King was really one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who's the, who was the guy the the uh, head of the uh, uh, what, what do you call it the, the Nation of Islam? Um, Farrakhan. 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 Yeah. Do you know I'm the only Jew to ever interview Louis Farrakhan? Really. <laughs> Yes. Wow. You got to do it. And, huh? Yeah, really. Who's he? You got to do it. Yeah, well, I, I had this producer, and she was black, and she had ins with him. And so she convinced him to come do the show with me. I mean, you don't hear him get interviewed that often. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the best. I still have it here. It's still one of the best interviews <laughs> I ever did. It was just, uh, well, and we got along beautifully. Just he didn't beautifully. Know you were Jewish. No, he knew I was Jewish. You know, I mean, but uh, he, he, I liked him a lot. I thought he was, he was smart. Do you know, 
My father, when I was a kid, I used to listen to a radio show. It was called Horace Height and his musical nights, and he used to have these talent shows and so on and so forth. And Louis Farrakhan was a virtuoso violinist. You didn't know this, did you? No. Yeah. And he was on the Horace Height show as a featured violinist on that show. And then later on, he, mm -hmm. ran, well, he went, his next career was he sang calypso music. <laughs> yeah, he was quite a musician. And uh, uh, he, uh, you know, I, 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 I just, uh, I liked him. I liked him. I know it sounds weird, but I liked him. And he was very honest with me and tried to set the record straight on just about everything. I didn't even have to ask him about some of the statements he made about Jews. He said, they've all been misquoted. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. And then he went through each one and showed how it had been misquoted. Well, he That's said it. some horrible things. I grew up in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. It says here, iPhone XR is in the waiting room. I'm not going to trust that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting tired of watching all these old guys masturbate. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, well, no, we just, we last night, all we had was, a, I think, a picture of, what's his name, of uh, Phil uh, masturbating. <laughs> uh, but no, this is a iPhone XR. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm just going well, to, huh? That might be legitimate. That, that's a, that's a model of an iPhone. Yeah. But if, uh, if that person is listening to the program right now, please yeah, put your real name it. in there instead of iPhone XR. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell uh, him to put a different name in there and then we might let Well, him he in. just hung up anyway. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's the clue. Yeah. They'll call back on a Samsung S8. Well, one person the other night tried to sign in using the name Jack Bishop. <laughs> and the only reason he couldn't get away with it is I know that Jack Bishop's... Um, um, yeah, real name. Re, uh, Jack Bishop's, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, computer, isn't working right now. Oh. So. <laughs> Uh, let me see, here's Ray. Maybe he was iPhone X. Uh, Ray? 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 Mm, Would hey. you do, turn your cell phone around? Your name Ray, are you there? Ray? Mm. Oh, there, there you are. There you are. There you are, Ray. Were you, were you iPhone XR? What? I can't hear you. You're, 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 you're muted. muted. You're yeah, I, switched, I, I logged out and logged into Zoom because I wasn't logged in. I figured that's why you didn't let me in. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it was iPhone XR, it said, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because we've been getting a lot of people trying to call this program and show us people jerking off. You know, I, you I know. I saw that the other day. Yeah. You, you might and actually, I remember that's why I put my name in. Yeah. You might actually get more work if you upgraded your iPhone to something that's not seven years old. <laughs> no, an iPhone XR. For me? Yeah, you. I'm teasing you, Ray. It and works. Per yeah, I I just got a 14. And I, well, I went from an 11 to a 14. The XR was right before the 11. And yeah. I got to tell you, it's it's really nice. Yeah. Hey, you know what my favorite one was? It was the 7 Plus. I loved that phone. That was a good one. I have a very good one right here. But this one, this is this on a 13, still. and I can trade it in, but I'm not going to. Um, because I, I, I like it. It's fine. You know, it, it does what it has to do. And it, the quality, you know, the, it really the 14 it doesn't have that much more new in it. The difference between the 11 and the 14 is like, you know, cleaning Night off today. your glasses, you know, but, yep. you know, I might wait, well, till, I might wait till the 15. If I live that long, you will. My XR, after the last uh, iOS update, the yeah. battery runs down like crazy. Oh, really? I think they're trying to do something to me. I, they don't want you to have this phone anymore. I'll tell you, though, I've been, notice, I've been noticing that my iPhone, the battery, and it's not that old. It shouldn't be that way. It has been uh, going down a bit, you know. Um, Mine's terrible now. Sometimes it's not usable. We got in trouble for that a while back. <clears throat> what? 
They got in trouble for that a while back. Why were they? Were, I know, I remember, yeah. Were they, they were, were doing some uh, updates and it was draining down the batteries and I think mm. they got popped for it and had to give well, some refunds and stuff back. It, it was around their, the you, seven and eight yeah. area. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. It happens to a lot of people. If you read online when the newest iOS update comes out, it says battery drain is one of the things and usually after a couple of days of it reorganizing in the background, your battery should go back to normal, but the last well, it got a little I... better. Mm -hmm. Mine, it, the first, the first week, it was almost unusable. I had to carry a spare battery around. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then now it's, um, it got a little better, but it's not, it's much worse than it was before the last update. I, I, this is an FBI clue. It's time to get a new phone. Yeah, I know. It is. Also, the facial recognition hasn't, hasn't worked in like three years. So. Oh. Mm. I have to type in the code every time. That's somewhat of a blessing to me. I like the yeah. I like where they you had the little touch thing. I missed that. Ah, uh, me too. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Well, my iPhone Seven, the one that. Oh, I you mean, where you just on. touched on the button. In a, yeah. In the yep. thumbprint. Read your fingerprint. Somebody said uh, at that one point good. they were thinking of going back to that, or to an upgraded version of that. It was supposed to be built into the screen of the fourteen, but they couldn't. Well, do the it. trouble with the facial recognition for a while was is that when we had COVID and everybody was wearing masks. You couldn't turn your phone on using your face. But then they came up with a way of doing it that if you have the watch and you had the uh, the uh, the the phone, you I don't, could, you could I don't have the watch. Your my, face. my phone works just fine with a mask. Well, no, they, they did away with that where you don't have to use the watch now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I understand the, thir the well, it, it was a problem during the 13 and they did a, a software update is what I was told. And that fixed the mask issue, so I don't know. Yeah, which one is yours, the 14? 14. Yeah. The differences are not that much, like you said, but uh, AT&T offered me $350 off of the 14, and I wasn't going to get that on the 13, and the 13 was only $50 less. Well, this so. leads me to a to a to a, something that was really griping me. I, I suddenly realized this, and I um, I bought a GoPro new GoPro, and because I'm a member of their, I'm, subs I'm a subscriber every year, so I can put it up on, pictures up on the cloud and stuff like that, okay. So that was a big deal. Um, but uh, they sent me a thing, hey, you know, as a subscriber, you, you can get the phone for $350. Normally, 500 something, 500. Okay. So you're talking about a GoPro now? The GoPro, the yeah. So okay. then I get this thing, Christmas time is here, and here's our Black Friday specials. Buy your GoPro now and get it for $400. <laughs> oh. And I went, well, what the fuck are they doing here? <laughs> They're raising the price on their special, you know? <laughs> I couldn't figure out why they did that. It just didn't make any sense to me. And then I started looking at a lot of these companies I do business with or that I've looked at prices before. What they do before Friday the 13th is they say raise their prices on the thing so that when they then have their Black Friday specials, they bring their prices down to what they normally charged for them. You know, so, I mean, it, 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 it's all a big rook. Yes, uh, uh, capitalism. Don't, don't, yeah, don't take offense, Charlie. This is more meant than just. Why is there no White Fridays? Why is it always black? <laughs> why do the blacks get all the benefits? <laughs> it, it's, it's meant to be in. Why is there no White Friday or White Saturday? It, it, it's. <clears throat> I'd be pissed if I was Well, they black. used to have what they called White Sales, which yeah, were in it, February, and it was on sheets and pillowcases that were white yeah. right uh, and i yeah, thought I it was just that. i just thought it was a special sale for the ku klux klan right right you know. <laughs> that's right it comes with a pattern to where you cut the eyes out <laughs> you remember the white front store white yes front? yeah yes yeah. Yeah. how were, come they didn't uh, have a black was, front yeah hi there brother <coughs> how are you everybody sit down it's okay it's just me oh okay. all yeah. right mm -hmm. Anyway, so I, uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, um, 
Did, did you, uh, well, the only thing was that the Ku Klux Klan, I knew a guy who was in the Ku Klux Klan once, and he was a bedwetter, so he had to wear a rubber sheet. It was a... Thank you. Boy, that must have been embarrassing. You know, he he probably wouldn't have ever been the Grand Wizard. Or he might That's have very good, but you should, if you're going to tell that joke, you should, he should have, I wonder if he was the Grand Wizard. Yeah, well, that's what See. I tried to get it in. It didn't is this, work. It didn't is this work. bad joke night? Did what? I answer bad joke night? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No different. No, every day every day. night, every night with <laughs> Alan here is bad joke night. Yes, absolutely. Um, so anyway, well, we're coming up on Christmas, or as my father used to say, Christmas is at our throats again. You know, uh, my least favorite holiday. Mine too. Really? Uh, now, I, oh, yeah. you know, you can easily say, okay, you're Jewish, Alex, that's why it's your least favorite. But it's my least favorite because it's like, uh, my favorite is Thanksgiving. Because that is just, you sit down, you eat, you pig out, and you say, hey, I love you, and uh, hey, I'm thankful for this or thankful for that. Christmas, you've got all this pressure. Yeah, too yeah. much stress. Yeah, and then mm. uh, it is the height of the suicide season. Because people who don't have anybody to celebrate Christmas with have a tendency to commit suicide. Or if they don't get the right present. So it's kind of like rubbing, rubbing people's noses into the fact that they have no, nobody that cares about them. You know? <laughs> no so, good gifts. Yeah. <laughs> now, it, it, of course, is um, Kevin's favorite time of the year. Uh, yeah, it's been a shitty year this year, so I'm ready for it to just get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. been a really shitty year this year, but especially you, the last couple months. Have you given up doing the Santa gigs? No, not really. I still got the thing, and I did did it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, there's a Santa shortage. I heard. Yeah, there is. I could be mm -hmm. making a lot of money, but I'm not worried about it. Because you're the most natural Santa I've ever seen. You know? Yeah. But... Are you got... a member of one of the be uh, real bearded Santa organizations? Not officially, no. But oh, okay, because they have those. They do. Heard of it. Yeah. There, there is a bunch of them, and the, I was in a group with a bunch of them. But I think it's. Yeah, I'm just a Well, dealers. why is there a shortage of Santas this year? Because of COVID, they lost a lot of them, and <laughs> and you know even the fake ones, they didn't uh, come back, and that's one reason I haven't gone back is. I don't want a bunch of snotty kids breathing all over me and shit. Yeah. The fake ones. They have got the RSD and all that stuff. The, the fake ones are easier to come by, but they don't, they haven't come back. The real ones with the real beards <clears throat> are uh, more in demand. Oh, so you're, what, 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 what constitutes I, this? I want to hear from a professional. What constitutes a fake Santa? A fake beard a fat guy with a white beard. <laughs> A guy who doesn't ha doesn't have a white beard. Huh? A fake Santa doesn't have a beard. A no, they, they wear beard. the fake beard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. took me a minute too because I thought God, I have always heard there was only one Santa. Yeah. But all, you, you aren't can get all good money if you got a real beard and they the kids can come up and yank on it and everything else. Oh, so lovely. Yeah. Oh, how nice. how hard have you had kids yank on that beard? Uh, I've had them grab it and hang on it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you get hazardous duty pay for that? Did you say Pretty get much. off of me, you little shit? I've got pictures of the shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. I got that, that one year Phil came by, and I, I don't know why I haven't deleted them, but I got about three or 400 pictures in my phone or on my files from one year that I did them. I just haven't deleted them yet. Did I like Phil keep... sit on your lap? Yeah, really. No, he missed. It. <laughs> okay, so you have kids sit on your lap. Do any of them pee on your lap? No, no, no. That hasn't happened. Okay. No. That do you hasn't... put a beard extension, or do you just leave it at that length? No, I just leave it. Okay. And so by that, sometimes it's a little longer depending on whether I've trimmed it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I've I've gone to private parties and gone there for. 30 45 minutes and walked out with 400 bucks wow 
Wow. wow. What about when you're when Christmas? you're out? What? What, what, what were you going to say, Ray? Oh, sorry. Ray? What? Oh, when you're out delivering toys on Christmas, uh, do, you, do you get icicles on your beard from being so high up with the sleigh? No, I drink a lot of alcohol. It doesn't It doesn't stick that way. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Hey, you know, I saw a poll <laughs> that said that 20% of Americans believe in, that Santa Claus is real. <laughs> those are all the MAGAs. Isn't that the Republican Party? Twenty yeah. percent. <laughs> and are these are these are adults, right? Adults, yeah. Twenty percent of American adults believe this Santa Claus is real. Come on. <laughs> those are all the flat earthers. Yeah. yeah. Hey, how many flat earthers are there? I don't know. There's too many. Yeah. Yeah. Probably twenty. I love them though. They crack me up. Flat earthers. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, Hilarious. What was it? Uh, we mentioned this last night, and it, uh, Marjorie said to me, "Gee, this brings up a lot of questions." They have uh, Stanford University has made a list of words they don't want to be used anymore. Oh well, yes, I've heard of And the best one is America. Yeah. That we can't what? refer to the United States as America. It's not the only thing in America. Well, the reason okay. being, and they they do have a point. That we're not the only America. Yeah. You know, the South, I mean, South America. The South America, we're North Central America, America, but we're not America. Central Central America. Well, yeah. there is Central America, isn't there? Okay. Yeah, yeah. There sure is. Yeah, Canada's part of America. Well, they're, part of, we're, they're part of what we are, which is North America. Yeah. Absolutely. But it mm -hmm. doesn't say, you know, North America, America, Central America, South America, you know. So this, they want it to be done away with, and it changed to, like, uh, instead of American, U.S. citizen. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh there, there's some, you're not supposed to say he or she anymore either. On their oh, I heard that too, yeah. Oh, boy. Why, Why can't yeah, you, you have to say they or use their name? Yeah. But it, it's like 1984, I swear. That makes no well, sense to me. No. I'm no, sorry. It doesn't make any sense. I'm a he. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm a he. I'm very proud of being a he. Uh, I'm an it. But you're... if you say they, like if I was My talking about Alex, it and wait a minute. What, what are you going to say? <clears throat> if I was talking about Alex and I said they, they seems like there's several people, not just one person. Oh, I hate <laughs> it when people do that. It drives me crazy. Well, but that's that's proper English. They is several. And, yeah. And, you know, it's not one. It's It's, it's several. The plural, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's not sing. They is not singular. And there are a whole yeah, bunch but... of, of other words that they were uh, griping about. You know, it's not being proper any longer. Manhole. You can't say manhole. You can't say, did they, was that one of them? Anything with man in it. Anything Person. with the word oh. man. Person. Like <laughs> freshman like freshmen in college, you can't say freshman because it has the word man. You have to say frosh or first year student. Fresh person. Real How who, stupid, huh? She was look a at the list. I downloaded the list. I have every, I have them all. It's oh, crazy. let's go through them. We are got you, we got half hour. Are, are, are you are you, uh, are you memorizing <laughs> them so that you don't? No, get I mean improper? I just went through them because some of them are some of them are are obvious. Yeah, you. But like, there's so many crazy ones on there that make no sense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that are so politically correct bullshit. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, my sister. Well, I guess we can't sing "America the Beautiful" now? anymore. No. You know. Uh, and they got to get a grinder to grind off, it, you know, uh, United States of America on all the the coins or. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is. And the, all those phrases that are like American, Native American stuff, like "pow wow," uh, you you can't use those because it's uh, offensive they, to Native Americans. But they are the ones that use that. They engines. Have hmm? They have a powwow, a big powwow thing here in Los Gatos, and they're the ones that, like, of the oh, neighbors. Well, I, may I, may I just stop for a moment and remind you of something? This was a, a, a list put out by Stanford University. What is the name of the team at Stanford University? The Cardinal. Cardinal. Really? What happened to well, the Well, it Stanford? used to be the Indians. What happened to the Stanford Indians? Well, they oh, got I, rid of it and changed yeah. it to the cardinal. That's and where they have the cardinal. trees. Oh, okay. 
I didn't know it had changed. When did it, when did it change this? Cardinals. When did it change the Stanford to Cardinals? Like Cardinal, like the color. Yeah, but I mean, Cardinal. Mm -hmm. It's like thirty years, ago, thirty-five years yeah. ago. Boy, where was years ago. where yeah. was I? Uh, I I think you were in New York City. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't <laughs> in New York City when that, when that happened. Uh, I was in in San Francisco thirty years ago. Yeah, it was no, it was more than that. It was about. I think it had to be like 45 years ago. Really? Yeah. I seem yeah. to remember them as Asher, always as the Stanford Indians. Asher, well, Alexis, I think, whatever. I know it's, yeah. Hmm. It's been over 40 years. Well, see, how time passes when you're not having fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Plus, there's a lot of people who complain about it if you say the wrong thing. Oh, I know. Like, the pro oh, now. Nick, or what are you, an idiot? Yeah, you, you you tell them you can kiss my ass. I, I'll I'll pronounce it the way I want. You know. Yeah. People, Merry Christmas, and sorry if I'm, I'm not sorry if I offended you. <laughs> really? How about saying Happy Holidays? Isn't that the new thing? That well, we no, do? no, I've I, I've, oh. done, I've done that for the last forty years. So have I. Happy holidays. I don't say Merry Christmas because I don't want anybody saying Merry Christmas to me. I don't no. celebrate it. I use Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because you got a lot of you got a lot of holidays now too. It's, you know. it's always interesting when you're walking by somebody homeless that's freezing to death, and you say, "Have a good holiday." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you kind of feel sorry for them, so. 1981, they changed it. Huh? Really? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I didn't. I. I. Okay. I was. Uh, where was I? I was in. Uh, you were in San Francisco. I just San went Francisco. back to San Francisco in 1981. Yeah. In 1980, 79 is when I late 79 I went there. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I. Uh, I was there. I guess I wasn't there to. I didn't pay attention to them changing the name of the of the. Uh, well, that was 40 years ago. I mean, who could remember something like that? Don't say that, please. I did. Because, see, <laughs> I, I, I'm personally offended by that, and it should be right on Stanford's street. list of things not to do, and that's to say 40 years ago to Alex Bennett. You know. Okay. Because I started thinking about how long have I known so-and-so, and 45 years, you know. Bill. God, could you imagine knowing Phil all those years? Well, I mean, how about uh, 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 Jack Bishop? I've known him. I, well, I, I knew him in San Francisco on a minor basis, but got to really know him in Houston, Texas in 1966, 67. Wow. How many years ago is that? Too many. 57, uh, 55. Over 50. 55. Yeah. So yeah, known, I know that because that's my year. I've known Jack for 55 <laughs> years. I mean, come on. That's your year? It's ridiculous. You were born in 67? How long have I known Phil? I've known Phil since uh, uh, the 19... So long you tried to forget him. The he, 19, in 19, 73, he, last night he said 73. Yeah. He would have been 18 years old. I, I was doing the math while you guys were talking. Mm -hmm. Something's he, wrong with that. Yeah, no, that was my thought. Yeah, that's Sorry, an awfully know. long time to not know somebody. Yeah. You know. At least he's here to remind you. Right. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I, I think about this and I go, where did it all go? You know? I time mean, flies. I mean, it's a long time ago. I grant you that. But you go, where did all this time go? Just boom. It's like nothing. I, I find... That for me, the older I get, the quicker time goes by. Well, it, I often thought it was because, uh, it, you know, it, it, when you're a kid, it takes forever for a year, a year to go by. It, it takes forever for your next birthday to come. That's why kids are always going, how old are you? Well, I'm th I'm five and three quarters. Right. I'm <laughs> five and seven eighths, you know. Phil, Phil still uses that. He still says I'm 67 and a half. Yeah. And you know when you when you get to be an adult, you don't want to say you're the next you're the next year's age till that day comes. You don't go a half, a quarter, anything like that, you know. Uh, but I mean, you I, I you just don't. Uh, it's just not something you generally do a lot. So anyway, I just you know I just I 
And I, I was just thinking about this year. This year's gone by so fast. Yeah. And yet it was just a year ago that I thought, oh, this year is going awfully slowly. Well, I think what happens is, as you get older, you get used to them, <laughs> you know? And they just boom, 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 boom. And, and you want to dig your heels in and say, slow down a little bit, you know? I mean, I know mm -hmm. my life is an infinite, and I know that people are dying around me who are my age and younger. And uh, I just uh, slow it all down a little bit, okay? Let's go into slow motion. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. You know, it just keeps going, and then you're gone. You know. I mean, I got into a very morbid thought the other day, and that was that we're at an age now where either Marjorie or I is going to go before the other one. You know, unless mm -hmm. we get killed in the same automobile accident together, yeah. you know. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, and that kind of bothers me. Uh, well, I, since you guys don't drive, that's not likely. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's like one of us is going to die before the other. There's no question about it. It could be by days, for all we know, but it, one is going to. And I just said, that's kind of like, you know. Early uh, on in COVID, uh, uh, husband and wives were dying. Oh, they, 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 were, they were dying sometimes at the same time. There were people yes. who had uh, were on life support systems Ventilation. in beds yeah. next to each other. Yep. Yeah. Who went? Yep. Yeah. Together? Yeah. But think of how terrible that is. Romantic. It, it, that's romantic, but think about how terrible it is for the children. Yeah. And oh, it's horrible. Not, have you ever seen anybody that's been intubated? It's not romantic. Mm. No. no, I have. It's terrible. I know. It's horrible. I had a good friend who had that and he died. Uh, he, was, he was in a coma for a month. They put him down. Yeah. And he was intubated, and then all of his muscles got so atrophied he died. Like they they could they couldn't with you know make his organs keep working anymore. Right. I know one of the most depressing things I ever had to do was put down my dog. Yep. Yeah, I told him he wasn't as good as the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, putting down I put down several dogs. And I, I, I make a joke about this, but it's probably true. I could probably put my mother down with less drama and stress in my life than my dog. Mm. I'm, closer to, I'm closer to my dog than I am to my mother. Really? How do you put your mother down? Um, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I like your dad more. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Take her off life support. <laughs> well, that's what I had to do. That's that's a decision I had to make while I was shopping at Macy's. Okay. <laughs> I'll get this to me bag. Now I'm gonna call the hospital. No, Take mom off. No, no, I then get a call. I get a call, and it's my business manager. Says, I have your mother's doctor on the line, and then he says to me, "Your mother isn't eating. Uh, she isn't taking sustenance. We can force food into her. We can keep her alive." But, you know, I think she really wants to go. And I said, I had to make a decision. And I said, you know, if she doesn't want to eat and she wants to go, let it happen. And, uh, she? yeah, and, and I had to make that decision while buying a pair of socks. You know, I mean, <laughs> really, I'm serious. And my, grand, my grandfather was 87, and I took care of him for the last three years of his life. And what we had talked before, and he said, if I ever go into a coma or something, he goes, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to put you through that. And then one night he had, he was sick like a couple of days before. And then one night he had a really hard time and kept coughing and I grabbed him and then he came out and then I, I laid him down. But then the, the, when the ambulance came, they said, well, we can revive him, but he's going to be a vegetable. And I said, no, don't do it because I know he's, you know, he well, I mean, want... people are going to think, oh, how cruel of you. Uh, you right. had to think about this while shopping for your mother, but my... My mother, folks, was 100 years old, okay? <laughs> so, you know, I mean, uh, everything there is a, there is a season. I, I tell Marjorie not to, if you're in the hospital, don't shop for socks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just got her a Toomey bag. What is it? Oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, That's right. 
You weren't in the hospital. Well, the last time I bought a Tumi bag was for me, and it was, my mother was going to die. But no, but I just said, go ahead. If she doesn't want to eat, just let it happen if it's going to happen. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they could have kept a, kept feeding her through a tube for the next year or so, and she'd still be kind of alive, but that's not being alive. Yeah, yeah. my my stepfather, he had he started getting Alzheimer's dementia. He like fell like ten times in one year. I didn't even know that he fell, but his wife told me, and he went quick. He went. They the doctors were there. They said, oh, about three more weeks. So I was headed down the next weekend, and then like within like one night, he all of a sudden he wasn't going with his medication reacting to it and he passed away my best friend his mom is in a hospital right now and she's been in there with with alzheimer's for i think like four years mm -hmm. so he's been taking care of her for you know the, the family's been taking care of her for four years and she doesn't even remember them every time she sees them so yeah you see those two and i'm sort of glad he went quick you know it sucked that it went like that but man to, to take care of someone with alzheimer's you know that you're expected you know that might remembers you and it's like man the pictures i see from them is just really sad well i had a friend uh, marjorie is a very good friend whose husband i think it was alzheimer's or it was something like it and uh uh or no maybe it was uh it was something else but anyway it was one of the, a slowly progressing disease in which eventually he doesn't notice the people around him and so on and this went on for four years yeah and when he man. finally died uh, we went out to the uh, out to the sitting Cemetery. shiva, you know. Oh. And no, they they held a private thing, and uh, uh, we felt good for her. We felt t really terrific for her, because there there was no husband there. She he hadn't lived with her for the last four years. He didn't recognize her for the last year. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. it's it's such a relief for the family finally when that comes to an end. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. are we my, depressing I, you, folks? I hope so. <laughs> my my best friend's mom, she was like the spark of everybody. You know, whenever she see me, she's oh Brian, run over and hug. And I didn't see her for a long time. She had the Alzheimer's. They've been taking care of her. And then uh, I saw her at a Super Bowl party that my friend was hosting, and she was there. And I glanced in the backyard and I saw her and I'm like really excited to see her because I haven't seen her in so long and I forgot about the Alzheimer's and she just had a blank stare at me. And it was like, man, the like shivers ran up and down my spine. It was like, wow, I, I it just so shocking yeah. that you know, they don't remember you at well, all. Well, imagine you know that? Uh, that you're just a friend of the family. Imagine oh, the yeah. family facing yeah. that same thing i mean it yeah. really is a dreadful disease where they where they're concerned i can't I imagine know. it if no. my parents had recognized me or whatever yeah yeah are your parents still alive charlie no they've been uh, there for 30 oh, years oh okay well then they obviously won't recognize you you know so <laughs> Not anyway uh we joke we there joke about death oh god that's because all of us are over 50 on this group yeah yeah Anyway, hey, listen, that's it for tonight. We got one more Thanks show for the, the year, and then we can say to each other tomorrow night, I'll see you next year. You know? Oh, great. That's the, I know. <laughs> I know. Is but, there no show tomorrow night? No, there's a show tomorrow night. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll be the last is, one of the year. Last is, one Jack, year. is Jack back on the air yet? No. Oh, okay. Apparently, you don't listen to GabNet. Uh, anyway, yes, I do. But, I do, but, but I haven't listened in a but while. But jo Josh will probably do a show tomorrow night for an hour. And what'd you do on Alex's birthday? He grilled us last night. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you do? What'd on you do birthday? on my birthday? I don't know. I'm sorry. See, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, thank you so much for being with us. Charlie, thank you. Thank you to Alan. Thank you to Kevin. Always love having Kevin here. Ray, great having you here in spite of the fact you never listened to GabNet. And uh, Brian Neary. Uh, Only if I'm on. Everybody, give a, big, give a big wave goodbye, okay? And I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go. That's our citizen panel uh, for tonight. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll join them tomorrow along with some others. Uh, right here, uh, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, yeah, you know what. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>